Dear Venerable Sisters and Brothers, Dharma Prince, we are going to have another session of question and answers. We will ask PL to start the session with written questions. Please. With your permission, Bhante, uh, first question. Most Venerable Bhante, report on meditation. Number one. Walking meditation. With much gratitude to you, I report that I maintain fair sati. I get disturbed by thoughts that is not a problem. Sitting meditation. Primary object, rising and falling. I wish to report a general problem. I have been meditating for a long time, although there were long gaps. In the beginning years, my concentration was very good. I went many times into a very calm, serene and pleasant state of mind with no feelings of the body. For some time now, I got floods of thoughts. I attended a few retreats here during this year and more sittings were like that. At times I got into oblivion. I come back to primary object but at times I have to search for it. During this retreat at some sittings I even had to go back to the basic tactic, counting breaths. Even then, the mind went astray. Thanks to your Dhamma Desana, without any effort, my life has got adjusted nicely. The series on Nibbedika Sutra helped a lot accordingly about one year ago I completely gave up my long time work as musician and a very long career in literary work also I have given up all forms of mass media my social activities are much less however even with such an atmosphere conduce you for improving mindfulness and even with good sessions of meditation in the past. Now I am counting breath. As I am getting old and time is running out, I am somewhat desperate. Most Venerable Bhante, could you please advise me what should I do? What should not I do. I am most grateful. The simple fact came to my mind is that uh, this is a kind of a reporting on the mishaps. Never mention about when and where mind falls calm and quiet with the in-breath and out-breath or rising and falling. So when and where you try to present primary object first, and that is the attitude when you go to the meditation, meditation will be naturally good. Instead, if you are going to report about the wandering thoughts and uh, disturbing sounds and pains and kind of thing, you are promoting that. That's as simple as that. Don't talk about that. Even if you have a single one face to face with the in-breath and out-breath or rising and falling, talk only about that. Next day you will be free of all the distractions. This is our situation. We are very happy to talk about mistakes, wandering thoughts. That means we are invariably supporting the Mara, invariably supporting defilements. This is our gossip. So therefore, at whenever you are, you, you verily mention that I am going to mention about uh, the, the distractions. That means you are completely in the wrong view regarding the 
perspective towards your meditation as well as reporting. So therefore, read the basic guidelines, report the best of your sitting and starting from the primary object and ex- give as detailed as possible they are and reduce the everything into one sentence about the distractions. Then next day your mind will be in the uh, positive way and uh, this is the this is my first and foremost and being a musician you must be happy because you have misled so much of people so far. So now the backlash is coming. Whenever you are doing mass media it's utter misleading. It's utter misleading. So therefore they expect more. Expect more to happen and this is not enough. This is not enough. So if you wish to not to go to the hell or kind of thing, let that happen and try your best to be with the neutral object and ask the whole world, if possible, with the same popularity you earn, to come back to the primary object, forgive and forget about your music and mass media you have done and ask others also to do. Then that is the way you can compensate it. Very easy to mislead, but to bring back. And uh, so therefore, when and that if you have done in that kind of a mass media, the communication must be one of your important subject, impo- interesting subject. So communication is completely wrong in this reporting. You are talking complete about the mishaps, mistakes, in detail, and nothing about the primary object. So therefore, put it other way around, and that is the way you can do away with all the wandering thoughts, daydreaming and fantasizing. Report when and where I focus my in-breath. I feel the touch on this place, and touch was in this and that experience, and when it is to the out-breath, it was so and so. And try your next best to go for another in-breath and out-breath or another rising and falling and for that counting is the preliminary work but just counting and then go more and more exploration into the shapes and the manners and the natural characteristic of the in-breath and out-breath so it is not much of a hard task once you corrected your perspective Dear Bhante in the past, I had been hinted by a Bhante that I was too tight and not relaxed in my practice during a retreat. He did not say a word to me, but instead hinted me by tying a blessing straight string tightly on my wrist and held on to a, held on to a door, kept firmly without letting it go when I try to push it open. Just for annotation, the Bhante is your relative. I guess he is originally from Kandy and now the abbot of a church turned into a temple in USA. But correct me if I am wrong. The other occasion is a nun in Burmese tradition scolded me that I was walking with losing mine because I had hated. For both occasions, I did not ask them what behaviors of mine during the retreat that are unmindful. I think I did not ask as I was immature minded that time. My question to Bhante How do we make sure we do not overdo or underdo during a retreat apart from following the schedule and keep our mouth shut? Second question. How to practice, uh, how to practice as a yogi without upsetting the dear and close ones and without being outcasted by people surrounded? surrounding 
our life for someone living in a non-Buddhist society. Apologize in advance for asking Bhante to answer questions arising from situational comments from other teachers. Thank you for your kindness. So, you, you have to understand, you are always overdoing and underdoing. Don't try to do, try even to do away with that, impossible. Human life is a, a kind of a, uh, perversion. So try to understand what is the norm with respect to the norm, what is the overdoing, what is the underdoing. Fix the norm. Norm is here and now. When and where you are with more and more with here and now, or you frequenting with here and now, you are underdoing and overdoing are reducing. If your relationship with the here and now is reducing, that means un- overdoing and undoings are improving, developing. So always it is there. When and where you are not here and now, always it's an exaggeration or underestimation. So it's a natural fact. And the other thing is, the second part of the question, we are in the society, everyone is with its own one-upmanship. So therefore, we... Uh, Specifically, when we try to understand who am I, things as they are, we are naturally outcasted. Not only by the outside, but even our value judgment too. So therefore, that is also natural. We have to accept it. It is not their mistake, it is my mistake. So therefore, how can I be with it? Earlier, I was doing it without mindfulness. Now I do the same game with mindfulness. So bookkeeping is there. You know where is the what is the places and what are the conditions through which I get outcasted and uh, thrown away from the norms. So therefore, only do now have is the bookkeeping, the amounts of mistakes you are doing. So don't try to live in the world without mistakes. Nothing absolute in this world. Everything is relative. So you have to understand the present context. And with respect to the here and now, see whether it is you are advancing or uh, going backward. Uh, therefore, don't expect, don't ask other people, don't expect other teachers and other people to interpret. Of course, that is part and partial of the ethics. But internally, try to be with mindful and uh, most important and interesting thing is, while doing overdoing, while doing underdoing, if you can still make the mindfulness, it is better than the mindfulness without these distractions. The mindfulness is very colorful when you, whenever you can maintain it with all the overdoing and underdoing. So that was the only challenge I got through Venerable Dhammika, he he asked me never to change your lifestyle. Just do exactly the same, but bookkeeping. Be aware, where where are you doing overdoing and underdoing, and ultimately when and where you get the basic data, the feasibility study, they naturally adjust into. So therefore, don't try to get rid of them, but when and where it happens, Start be open with that. Now I am overdoing. Now I am underdoing because I am no more in the middle, no more in the here and now. So in any case, whatever the question, take the here and now as the the benchmark, reference point, sign. When and where you are there, you are safe. You are in the middle. You are a mediocre. You are in the no, in the mode. The when and where it is not there either overdoing or underdoing. So therefore, now you are just like in front of a big mirror or in front of a video camera. Everything is being uh, filmed and later you can see mindfulness is just like a mirror. It is like a, just like a camera. Don't try to act in front of there. Just be with it. And uh, mindfulness will give you the, the, the reflection image as it is. So this is still with the wrong idea that uh, to get rid of our underdoing and overdoing, impossible. 
impossible unless otherwise you comes to know even your teacher comes to know even the other people comes to know no no value till you see it so only the this is presented this take the here and now as the mode and with respect to that you must understand you have to see you will see you must be about you must be prepared to see it uh, don't expect anyone's help it is impractical dear bhante i have got back the observation of stoppage between rising and falling they occurred not just during sitting but also while i am sitting on a chair to have a tea and lying down on the bed my questions to bhante is whatever the whether the stoppage observation is an attachment and how should i unlimit myself in observation thank you for your kind advice so for an example if you are if you are to go into a film hall and see and if you are sharp enough to see the darkness in between through flashes two flashes that means you are so thin slicing the time moment you see the darkness it is impossible to do because that is the way our eye and the projector and the whole game is going then if you see the flickering nature if you see the darkness and color or light moment you see the darkness the content of the film is uh, becoming un- unattractive colorful the colorfulness reduces because you are more attentive to the darkness darkness won't carry any fabrication no story no tragedy no comedy only the tragedy and comedy and the content is in the flashes if you ignore the darkness only you can see entertain and understand the theme of the film but when and where you become sharp enough to see darkness and the light if at all then onward no colorful not dramatic nature of the film so that is how anything if you see it is a fabricated it is conglomerate agglomerated and it is fragile it is not a solid unit it's a agglomerated thing you don't make much of projections with that so let that happen again and again and uh, when it happen the disenchantment and dispassion it this passion natural to come in so give more attention when and where possible uh, the the gaps in between stoppage in between it will do the balance dear bhante i took your advice to practice walking watching the uh, placing of right and left foot respectively onto the ground for the first 30 minutes there were purely right foot and left foot touching the ground feeling after that there was a sensation on my head at top left like a massage machine has put onto it it lasted for 5 minutes the next of the 10 minutes i felt heaviness on the legs after that i felt the both right and left feet as if have brushes work working underneath them kind kind like electrons are running underneath the feet this sensation lasted 30 minutes for the walking i had this type of experience while practicing at home and the very first day i arrived at this center am i progressing or look oh, they can't hear am i progressing or showing no improvement thank you whatever may be the progress is the eye if the mindfulness is intact whenever the mindfulness continues accountability is there bookkeeping is there 
So you can see whether you are talking something related to the primary object or not. The sometimes appearance is very lucid, the mind is very agile, but you don't know whether you are inside the primary object or outside. So that is how mindfulness keep the consistency and the lucidity, the sappy nature, the intrinsic characteristics, sometimes it is very prolific, very lucrative, but for everything to happen, come up to that momentum, only the single factor is the mindfulness. So if it is continuous, whether it is very dramatic and very uh, the juicy and sappy or not, no problem. So therefore don't uh, let the mind to carry it away by these details. Details are good. But underneath decisive factor is the mindfulness or consistence of the mindfulness or steadfastness of the mindfulness, continuity. And that uh, one should take an effort, strive. Later it will be naturally happening and you feel secured. The things are happening a smoother way or autopiloting way. So till that the entertaining doubt is natural. But don't encourage it. Just reduce to one single variable. Be mindful. And if the mindfulness is continuous, or we can say if the ability to go back to the primary object is always at your command, then mind is progressing. Venerable Bhante, Nivana is the state without greed, hatred and foolishness. Bhante, can we get rid of all these as we contemplate on Anapanasati meditation? The cessation of exhalation, end of exhalation with metta. I doubt whether we can do it, but I will make sure I can do it or not. So therefore don't go in plural terms. You, while doing your meditation, you can't let your family members to Nibba. No. While you are doing and while you are practicing, then and there you can have it. But still you have your own rights to entertain doubts. This is the main defilement. This is the main defilement, so what to do? It says the, the, the suffering coming out of doubt is more than the whole germs in the world creating diseases. Doubt is so much a pathogenic. Any, under any pure situation, doubt can come. So what to happen? Everything is negative, destructive. But some people are oriented with this entertaining doubts. Some understand this as wisdom. Some understand this as inquiring mind. These are the perversions or wrong perception. So let the doubt to happen. If possible, try to keep the breath face to face as much as possible. Whether you really understand <coughs> lack of greed, hatred and delusion or not, just believe but there has no any agenda, no malice idea behind. He says wholeheartedly, be mindful, be mindful on the in-breath and out-breath. For your verification, it will take time. Till that, if possible, it is just a request, don't entertain doubts. Even if doubts are there, don't talk about them. What is the use? This is just a wastage of time and everything. So, more than the whole diseases due to the germs, doubt is giving so much of frustration to the world. So, that is why when you become Sotapanna, first and foremost thing is you are unshakable. Unshaken uh, to the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, so much of release. Till that you doubt, you fear, you entertain uncertainty for in everything and anything you confronted with. So this is the defilement. Try to do away with that or don't fertilize it, don't nourish it and try to keep the mind as much as possible with neutral object. Venerable Bhante, 
I really appreciate the talks on Girimananda Sutra as I, as I chant it with the Sinhalese meaning. Now I can do it with a lot of understanding to uh, prevent Kyo diseases a heal and heal diseases. Bhante, I have missed to not Sabha Loka Anna Birata Sanya Sabha Loka Anna Birata Sanya Can Bhante please explain it? Thank you with me. So you have to please repeat two days back talk and then you will be back in the Sabha Loka Anna Birata Sanya so same thing I will be reading again, I will be telling again. So whenever you take a worldly interest, uh, that is you are paving the way for defilements. Worldly interest or whole world is nothing but to create karmic forces and defilements. So you have to live on the world without an attachment just like uh, the drop of water on the petal of a lotus. Even though it is sustaining on the surface, it is not smeared with. So they are two different, differently behave separately. Like that, be on the earth without much of worldly attachment. It is difficult, that is why the Buddha given it as a good task. So if detail necessary, you may go back to the uh, two or three days before uh, fair information available of course on top of that you can add your own experience more and more you advance you are bound to get more and more information and your own interpretations walking meditation I focus on the left and right foot foot came in but I ignored it and focus on the feet. I look at the sensation of each foot. There were cold sand, warm, soft, hard, cross, and distant feeling at various occasions. I then started to notice sensations on only the left foot. Each and, each and every sensation like hardness or softness or wetness of the sand were all different to one another. You have to use the mic properly. Keep the mic. Example, the warmth of the sand varied at every footstep and I also noticed after a while of focusing on the left foot only I did not feel the presence of the right limb. Felt like walking on one leg. It is amazing how mindfulness works. Towards the end, after reaching the end of the walking path, I stopped for a while and felt vibration on the teeth again. But I kept on focusing on the feet and continued on the walking path. Venerable Bhante, is it possible to focus on vibration while doing walking meditation as we do in Anapana meditation? May you attain Nirvana in this life itself. So it is also a kind of a, after experiencing. Uh, asking with the doubt verily explain that while walking I felt the vibration in the teeth but again asking is it possible so best thing is to let it happen again and again and verify by yourself uh, rather than seconding from another person so this is the way even under the nose it is happening doubt can kill you doubt can undermine you doubt can burn you doubt can give up frustration and tension. So you have only the way is repetitive application. That is called Anupasana. See again and again. When you again and again you see more and more you 
uh, experience or believe your experience, no room for doubt. But there, if there is a gap between the observed object and the observing mind, doubt can creep in. If there is no gap, they are immediate. No chance for gap. No chance for uh, uh, the deductive thinking. No chance for rationalization. Uh, that is how you have to keep the object so pro- immediate with, so close with, so diligent with, vigilant with. This is how you can do away. Otherwise, even you are in the very clear state of mind, still doubt can come and obsess it as if you are very inquiring, as if you are very analytical, as if you are happy with the wisdom, this is the way it is being imp- interpreted, but la- at end result says you are in frustration, you are in attention. So therefore, in order to get rid of, observe the same thing again and again, with your or under your very nose, that is what the first and foremost thing the Buddha recommended as he did it, it is called anupassana, sometimes the word meaning of vipassana also the same. Repetitive application in order to not to re- leave any rooms, for entertaining doubts. Venerable Bhante, does meditator unable to progress the meditation if the one cannot word out the meditation experience and not report to the teacher with metta? There is one fourth who Pandita Sada used to say uh, there are four combinations you can say. Some can meditate well and report well. For them, discussions and interviews are not necessary. There is another kind. They can meditate, but they do not know how to report. That is fairly the mistake of the teacher. So teacher take all the ways to give up aphorisms and models and all the kind of thing. Some other kind... No meditation, but they can report very well with good knowledge. It is utter nuisance in the meditation retreats. They read books back home and appear like writing like that they can meditate and this is the way it appears. So it appears like a putrefied food. No taste. On the last one, do not meditate, do not report, no problem. Only the people meditate and can't report is the only, this is the target group for the discussion. But whatever may be, if you continue to practice regularly, you are definitely hit the target. So the, those who are crippled due to lack of communication, it is the matter of teachers to take them for a dialogue discuss and straighten their views and some or the other keep them meditating regularly without entertaining doubts. So therefore this uh, Sakacha Anukahita the kind of facility the Buddha recommended you have to facilitate meditation by the discussion otherwise you will be in the wrong notion you will be in the misperception and believing the but you the, your stereotype thinking but in the discussion, it is a chance for you to reshuffle it and understand. That is also only for those who meditate properly but do not know how to report. They are the, the group get the maximum benefit in this kind of a discussion. Namo Buddhaya. Dear Venerable Sir, I do Anapanasati meditation and in the void state. Recently, my mind was always in an agitated state. Lots of thoughts start flowing in. Though it's hard, I was able to do sitting meditation at least for one hour. Sometime in between, I used to feel pain and other perceptions. Within brackets, salvation, heat, Cold. Salivation. Yeah, salivation. Heat, cold. Also, after I came here and in sitting meditation, I experienced 
calm state very peaceful again goes to agitated mind feeling uh, perceptions like that it went on one day while i was in a sitting meditation the mind went into a deep state within bracket felt, li- felt like it was in a deep sleep or dead i was fully aware of the mind stayed nearly 45 minutes and felt it will never never wake up command wake up and again i started feeling perceptions getting thoughts now in the sitting meditation i go to very calm and peaceful state thank you always appreciate your advices with gratitude may you be blessed with triple gem so as a comment i would say when and where this calmness is there it, you feel comfortable but you are not meddling and handling with defilements so it's a, just a the resting place when and where you are confronted with the defilement even though you say it you are not progressing that is what you call vipassana so therefore in order to have this kind of a continuous encounters you must have a rest period for recuperation resting and that is why this calm state and once it is finished again the perception happens unwanted thing happens doubtful thing happens that is the point where you are really dealing with the defilements and that is how the progress is always relative to the calmness and calmness is related to the agitated mind but when and where agitation happen only the cutting of kilesas or mining of the mind is really happening so therefore it take long time for you to report uh, and give you correct interpretation according to your observation at the beginning you have so much of crazy nature or the desire for this calmness good but it is not productive it is just a pace maker it is just like a rest house but if you are traveling the resting place is not the progress in time but it is uh, it is a must for a traveler that you have to understand that the while you are in the rest house no, no progress regarding the journey is concerned so therefore you have to balance it in a, a practical and pragmatic way proportionate way have a certain amount of rest and let again the natural way the defilement happens or friction happens and again you overcome them and take little rest and again you take likewise it has to go in alternative way once i experienced the equilibrium afterwards the jhana became more boundless white colorless and serene one time i felt there as if i came back to home but still they are not stable i can't enjoy leg pain perfectly and also itchiness given by mosquitoes ants boma pinsidueva bante excellence guidance teruvan saranai no comments necessary we can go to the next question most venerable bante can i borrow the book you mentioned about the brain and the emotions by richard davidson hope nemos is right an article about essay on thoughts dhamma therapy borrowed last time was already returned to rna library teruvan saranai that article i already sent i may be reji anoma and uh, samanira uh, so if anyone needs uh, please consult reji or anoma i can send it to vasanta also and if anyone needs uh, give me the email address uh, 
or meet uh, contact with the Dhamma Siri. And he is the one extracted from the Pandita Rama view, and the link is there, so you can download. Uh, so please give the email to your name, Sunit. Anyone who needs an uh, article, uh, then uh, Venerable Dhamma Siri can do it for me. And I will see the, the I have to go in, search the book uh, the, in the library uh, for that particular book. And if it is possible, I can lend. Most Venerable Bhante, may you please give the information about 60 day Six day retreat in Burma. Who should be contact regarding the retreat information? I don't know when it is already too late for this year retreat. If not, would you like to join the would you like to join the retreat thirty one Saranai? So you have to go to the Panditaram website or Saddamma Foundation website and the the complete Thing you can do uh, by emails, and then uh, the once you given the info, uh, the application with your photo, they will start correspondence individually. So please visit Pandita Rama. Just by tapping, uh, typing Pandita Rama, you can get. Or the equally parallel one is the Saddamma Foundation, uh, that is operative in USA. Uh, so. Uh, that is very informative. No, for they are doing it for the seventeenth year, regularly. So everything is on uh, online. Okay, that's all the written questions. We have taken about forty-five minutes. Mike, you got about duck Again, it comes Kaya Rogo. Is there any difference between something Kaya Rogo? What is Everything is based on Kaya, I think. So. I don't know. The organs are concerned, eye, ear, nose, tongue, and the body. Yeah. So, Chakurogo is the diseases related yeah. to that. So, this is going by organs, some, it is going by sometimes flame, biles, and others. So, different categories are there. Kairoga means the rest of the thing away from the eye, ear, nose, and the tongue. The different criterions. That is by the section, that is by the organ, that is by the flame kind of thing. So you have to categorize accordingly. Uh, thank you, sir. Another question. When you verse, it says, you should say, Amami Bhante. Amami Bhante. Is that correct to tell like that? We are giving forgiveness to So is that so? So when you are doing with the omnipotent, omnipresent God, do it. Don't do it. When you are doing with the humans, you can do. Each and everyone has their own due mistakes. Mm-hmm. I mean, sir. So I, am we a, I, am, I am a human. Ah. <laughs> so everyone is having mistakes. So you say, Bhante, I forgive you. For all, I see only the good part. I forgive or forget about the bad side. But the English translation is not like that. That we are giving forgiveness. We yes. seek forgiveness. Yes, we yes. The translation is like that, but that part term is kama mini bhakti. Yes, it is giving it forgiveness to the giving forgiveness to the person who is worshipping. Mm-hmm. So you have to uh, Change the translation? No, translation is correct. You have to change yourself. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, last time I read the uh, article about Venerable uh, Nyanawimala. He was the German monk, the wandering monk in Sri Lanka last time. And in that article, I read that uh, according to him, the so-called Nimita is hindrance to the Nibbana. He said like that. 
but then uh, yesterday or last time you mentioned that venerable uh, nyana rama encourage you when you were seeing the light so in that case what is the difference between seeing the light and uh, nimitta in that case so the first thing is you have to understand there are two kinds of concentration nimitta samadhi and animitta samadhi samadhi based upon the sign or samadhi is independent of sign so out of that the samadhi which is independent of sign that means animitta samadhi is almost close to nibbana so you start the samadhi with the nimitta and once it's developed at the beginning it take refuge of the nimitta once it develops nimitta will be slowly slowly disappearing and then you develop kind of a samadhi not based upon any nimitta exactly the same in mindfulness also so therefore in order to get rid of or replace your sensuous desire and other worldly things you take make use the nimitta when and where the nimitta comes that indicate you are getting rid of worldly affairs getting rid of sensuous sense sexual kind of feelings insert nimitta and when you are more and more associate the nimitta by itself it is also disappearing and then go over to the animitta samadhi and that is the way to the nibbana so therefore you have to understand the strategic use of nimitta it is like a pole vault jumper is using a pole to go up to the peak and then throw away and then put a vault so you can you can say pole vault jumper pole is necessary or something to throw away up to the last minute peak you are using it at the last minute you throw in a jettisoning way and jump over the other side so nimitta also like pole so what will happen if you hold into the pole at the last minute you will hit the bar drop you are cancelled you you will not be the winner not to hit the bar you have to throw the pole but it must be very strategic till that moment you have to f- hold it very fast at that moment it must be in a situation to throw away in a jettisoning way you get the thrust and throw away and jump so this is a very simple trick we are utterly fool on that we don't know how to use a tool in a practical way we instead we love tools if you wish to have a good finished product you have to use the tool accordingly but the tool is not the finished product and once the finished product is there tool has done its own jo- its job finish like with the nimitta and even anapana even the rising and falling even the touching sense everything is a defilement everything is against the nibbana but it has its practical use in order to get rid of this household household affairs worldly affairs we take this temporary and more associate in that that also will disappear by itself that is a secret on the buddha new and he says you associate now the nimitta slowly slowly that also will disappear then you are free from the worldly affairs free from the nimitta then you are more closer to uh, emancipation to the nibbana does it make a sense and in the world the, the things if you wish to kill a person first be friend with him so anyone associating you is a killer don't trust no one has no time to give it to you they are always concerned about themselves if someone is specifically giving a concern he has his own agenda so that is the way if you wish to kill someone be first hug and then easy to send the knife the world is such a cruel thing so if you wish to uh, uh, if you to get rid of the nimitta first love nimitta and the nimitta will disappear okay now almost time up so we are going to take time for walking meditation and then after a break we will be meeting here
for a group sitting at about 350 thank you very much for the participation